I'm good. Good morning and welcome to Tree of Life oh. this Sunday morning, the 7th of August, in the midst of who knows whatever number the of lights. Uh, yes. Should I turn them on? Lights. Volume. The lights. Oh. <laughs> All right. Sorry. It's still good morning. Light up. Yeah. I know. I just, you I all that power there. I put on my face just doesn't show up the way it should. That's uh, I don't remember where I was going to start. Oh, in the midst of whatever number of heat waves we're about to go through, uh, Wednesday is the day that they expect it to break with a good thunder boomer like we had last week, um, which Marilyn would tell you, you slept through it. I went to bed home. I was tired at 730. I went upstairs. Uh, wind was howling, or it was Thursday night, and then I'm like, is it raining? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it it's is. not one of those sounds that I am cued into most of the time anymore. So that was that. We want to thank John for taking care of all God's creatures that we don't want inside the church at this particular point. And as Kate said, thank you for warning her before she sat next to it, in case that might have had a problem. And, see her run back out. So, we didn't do anything, did we? Um, with that, I invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness. As you are able, of course. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. Our gathering song is ELW 771, God Who Stretched the Spangled Heavens. Thank you. 
you all. And also, and also with you. you. We go forward with the song of praise, Lord, I lift your name on high. Hearing her now? Yeah, not well. Not well. No. And that's good. You got to speak up so we know. <laughs> All right. Right. Good morning. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 15. God promises childless and aging Abraham that a child of his own will be his heir, and that his descendants will number as many as the stars. Abram trusts God's promise, and through this faith he is considered righteous. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring. So a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him in righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We will read Psalm 33 responsibly. Let your love and kindness be upon us as we place our hope in you. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on the earth. God fashions all their hearts and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by the size of the army, nor are warriors rescued by their great strength. The horse gives vain hope for victory. Despite its great strength, it cannot save. Truly your eye is upon those who fear you, O Lord, upon those who wait for your steadfast love. To deliver their lives from death and to keep them alive in times of famine. Our innermost being waits for you, O Lord, our helper and our shield. Surely our heart rejoices in you, for in your holy name we put our trust. Let your love and kindness, O Lord, be upon us, even as we place our hope in you. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 11. Abraham and Sarah exemplify the vision of faith that people of God enact in every age. Their hope and trust in God's promise allowed them to face an unknown future and to receive the promise of God. 
Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the world were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation. Even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. Amen. Um, I'm going to walk out from here for just a bit. In Hebrews today, what struck me, I mean, I read that at least four or three times, which I have no idea how many times I read it. But sitting here this morning, what I heard multiple times was faith, 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 and faith. And I don't have my cell phone with me, so I can't tell you if I Google how many faiths times showed up in there. Because I was still listening to it as it went along. But I do have a t-shirt again. <laughs> I might have used this before, I can't recall. No? Or you weren't here, at least, if I used it. <laughs> this is one of those things Greg warned me about. When you get to be a pastor and you've been doing it for 40 years, you probably repeat your sermon either intentionally or un unintentionally over the years. Uh, I haven't been doing it that long, so I don't know. And if I did, a uh, little grace <clears throat> is what I asked for, and we can just go forward with that. But the one I started with actually was the song we just finished, How Great Thou Art. What a way to move into a sermon, right? Because a song which celebrates the power of God's love for his people. Now, you see the t-shirt? Can you read the words? No? Okay. <laughs> for those who can't, do what my, my son showed me. You know, he's 38 years old. But it's like, if you can't read it, Dad, Get the cell phone out, take a picture, and then blow it up. <laughs> Which was, was that you during, or was that Anders? I don't know, but that's the least smart thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> during Vacation Bible School, one of the kids is sitting there going, no, it wasn't Vacation Bible School, I'm sorry. It was our niece uh, when we went out and celebrated uh, her mother's, Marilyn's sister's birthday. They're sitting there going through old photographs. And she all of a sudden taps it and goes, <clears throat> and her sister looks at her and goes, it's not a cell phone. You can't make it get bigger by hitting it and tapping it. <laughs> <laughs> Different things. I never thought about, like I said, my son told me, Dad, just take a picture of it, then you can blow it up and you can see it. So what it says is, trust me, I am a professional. And I'll show it again around here so everybody can see it. So you can see there's a character on there. And most of you probably recognize the character. <coughs> and if you don't, I'll make sure you know who it is. In a minute. Uh, the character, of course, is Wile E. Coyote. And do you remember who he purchased all the supplies or gizmos he used to create those Rube Goldberg? Another term for those of us old enough to remember who Rube Goldberg was. The style of traps he used in his attempts to get his dinner, that poor roadrunner. The company's name began with an A. Acme. It took the next line away from me, because it actually says it was not Amazon. It was the Acme, yes. Carolyn's got it again. But Amazon was only founded in 94, and most of these were probably done in the 30s and 40s, the old roadrunner cartoons and that. Um, and the Acme Company, which of course supplied most of these gadgets to our friend Wiley Coyote. I remember, though, that they were routinely shipped in what? A wooden box, a crate, which meant that he had to use a pry bar to open it. Now, most people nowadays don't know what a pry bar is unless they're looking at the Home and Garden channel and they see, you, yes, you know what a pry bar is? <laughs> Yep, you jiggle it and you help prop, pop the door open. And when we don't have that, we use screwdrivers and other tools which we're not supposed to use that way. <coughs> and pry bars, of course, sometimes were used in his contraptions that he utilized to try and catch it. It seems odd, though, to me because we are, despite working at Amazon, we're also purchasers of Amazon products. And that Amazon packaging has varied in those seven years that we've been there because initially it was all boxes. Then it became cellophane packages. Now it's a craft paper type recyclable packaging, which is also softened or cushioned in some, some way, shape, or form. And who knows what Amazon will think of next, because in the past seven years, they've gone through at least three different iterations, and we'll finally have more. Now, I got this shirt from my team at Amazon, and it's my way of poking fun at our in-house maintenance department. They are, of course, better paid, and get to pick and choose the projects they undertake. They are restricted. I 
don't like that term, restricted paths. And they jealously guard their fiefdom from encroachment by others, such as my team. On Friday, half hour before the end of work, I was asked to provide a mission statement for my team. And because I trusted the person I was speaking to, I said it should be, we do whatever maintenance can't or doesn't want to do. <laughs> yes. There was nobody in the big office at that point except for her, and I trusted her implicitly. But she did the old raise the eyebrow and go, uh-huh, really, Jim? Ah. But she was aware of my point. She even said, I don't think that would do well on a poster, especially with anyone from maintenance, even though it might very well be interpreted as true. Now, how do the above elements, Wiley Coyote, and a comment about maintenance fit into my sermon? It has something to do with the fact that I'm not sure whether I want to know if we as Christians are like Wiley Coyote here, constantly thinking we know the right answers or the right, and I put this in quotes, the only way to do something, or that all of us need to be more accepting of the circumstances we live or work within, and note that we are all just people trying to be the best we can, yet are very prone to falling into old habits which may not be very Christian. Now, I also came across something this week where Southern sayings we all know, and I forgot, I wanted to put this one at the start. I put it someplace else, now i got to think about what it was. Anyone heard this one before? Sweating like a sinner in church? <laughs> Last week, I am a sinner, I am in church, and I was sweating, but it's because we didn't have the air conditioning at the right temperature. I did put it down a little bit flat. But think about that. Sweating in church does not necessarily mean you're guilty, or that you're guilty of what you think might be undertaken or heard. So, <sighs> I just wanted to say with that one there. The other thing I had here, though, was apologies to those of us who are cat lovers. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Oh, Horrible thought to stand up here in the pulpit and say, more than one way to skin a cat. Um, we have had four-legged creatures almost all of our 40-plus married years, and we know that as cat parents, they worm their way into your heart, just like those of you who are dog parents. They are your children, whether you want to call them that or not. But we also know that there are frequently many ways to accomplish something. And that's what that phrase refers back to. But usually, what did they vary by? Time involved, possibility of success, etc. We may know the right way, but I believe determining the correct path from among many we may follow and still reach the end and be warmly welcomed into the arms of God might be the challenge. It is because our God loves us, not because we do the right thing with consistency, because Jesus and God accept our human foibles, knowing it is few who don't slip, slide, or fall somewhere along the way. I didn't have a slip and slide to bring in, or we might have had a little bit more fun trying to slide down that way until the water got onto the carpet, so then we'd have to clean the carpet and the whole nine yards with that. But. Isn't it good that God doesn't require us to be good all the time? Sometimes it is nice that our intention has the power to be heard by God. Now, I told Marilyn about this, and I'm not pointing this is not at her in any way, shape, or form. I finished another book this week. You can't tell I'm a pretty good reader, and I like to read. And I continue reading the author's notes at the end, because many times, they're fascinating. They're entertaining, they're insightful. They talk about their lives as they go along. And usually because of the way I read, I get anywhere from four to eight author's notes in a month. You get to hear their stories. And the one that I finished this past week was by an author by the name of Martha Carr. And many of these authors are people who had other jobs in their lives for their first 20 to 30 years of professional life have come to become authors at the end or at the midpoint of their lives or later. But on the 12th of July, so the, the prior book that I read from her probably had a June date on it, on our author's note, began with her note. 
I realized after last year's fifth round of cancer. I have a line here that stopped me cold. And what I'm saying is I can feel the hair on the back of my head going up at this point. I know in this congregation we have persons who have survived multiple bouts of cancer, but I've not heard of someone yet who's been through five rounds of cancer. But it was a few paragraphs later where a comment she made coalesced into an idea for this sermon. She asked a simple question. Who are your icons? I know what a mine would be Jesus Christ and those who followed and follow him today. Her follow-on comment was, my icons are people who set a good example for me by being decent human beings for no good reason. Nothing to gain, something to lose by doing the right thing. And this part here is what I really like. And they usually did it with a sense of a few paragraphs later, after identifying an Episcopal pastor who was her father's friend and example she wanted to emulate, she stated, do the right thing at all times because it's the right thing. There doesn't need to be other reasons, and you don't have to know where it's going or what it will cost you. Just go. That's real faith. Something that, that was identified in Hebrews. We look at life the way it is and ask, what can I do here to make it better for myself and others? Isn't that what we are called to do each and every time we awaken in the morning, even before we begin to emerge and or engage with those around us in our house and in our lives? A good Christian should be a good Christian should be engaged, should follow what I knew as a Boy Scout camping creed of leaving our campsite better than we found it. Of course, now it's not the Boy Scouts, it's the Scouts of America. I'm sure that camping creed still is out there. But the Christian should expand upon that, because just as Genesis 1-6 states that God gave dominion over the earth to mankind, many of us have come to understand this means we should be ecologically mindful caretakers of the earth, taking what we need and replenishing where we are able, sustaining it for the future of humanity and all of God's creation. And sorry, this goes to John right now. Even those pesky mosquitoes, which I personally have a few issues with, but I don't mind killing wasps or whatever that was. <laughs> now, I also brought something else to show. This is not as much fun. Or it is. Everybody has seen sandals before? Yeah. You want to know what they look like when they fall apart? <laughs> We were at Killen's Pond, we were walking out on that hot macadam, and going out there, and all of a sudden, I started to hear a, you know, flop, 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 and I'm like, I'm not wearing flip-flops, I'm wearing sandals. And I look down, and I go, well, that parking lot where we were parked, it was a good long walk, and I'm like, bare feet, or a sandal that falls apart, might fall apart. Marilyn's looking at me, she goes, I'd recommend you keep them on your feet. <laughs> I did, and I had some of the, the loose stones that were down there in the, embedded in the foot pad portion of it. Of course, within 50 feet, what happened? The bottom came off. Uh -huh. So I did the old hobble walk, you know, and got there, got in the car, and said, dang, these actually held up pretty good. You know, and all it is is a, a strap here is welded in or mel uh, glued in, and it worked out. You know? And then I'm going, well, these are cheap sandals that I bought probably 20 years ago. <laughs> I did buy them probably 20 years ago, but then I looked at it. I actually bought a name brand for a change. I bought the Teva sandals. Uh, but I mean, how often do you wear sandals? Yeah. 20 years is probably not a bad usage for it. When I'm an adult male who's going to work every day, mm -hmm. who's required to have closed-toed shoes, mm -hmm. and it's only on the weekends when I wear stuff like this. Um, if I went out cutting grass, we all know what the next thing would be. Right. Where are your toes? Underneath the uh, <clears throat> the blades, potentially, uh, sandals can get a long life because they're sandals. They all, or at least they're not working wear for most men. And yes, I do know one of your prior ministers did like to come in in sandals, uh, or so I've heard. There's nothing wrong with that, but not what most people call. But anyways, I just thought that was an interesting thing. 
Why? Because I bought them. I got good use out of them. Now I will put them into the trash. And I hope that somewhere downstream in that magical dump pile, they will break down. And these probably are at least more rubber-based than they are petroleum-based. So with time, they will break down and become part of this universe in which we live. studies of our gospel text today identify this text as part of Jesus' wealth management tutorial. Never heard about that in the past. So is that why I talked about my sandals, that I received good service from them? What is Jesus' wealth management tutorial? How would we apply it today? Would it require us to lay up large amounts of worldly goods or wealth for our own use? Or would it ask us to invest wisely in things that benefit the world as a whole? Does this mean we are called to invest in people or products? To emulate Jesus and God and invest in people. A few weeks ago, we hosted a vacation Bible school. The Tree of Life's people invested some of their time and energy in teaching another generation about God and Jesus, bringing another generation closer to the words of God and Jesus. God invested in his people. As we heard in our first lesson today, when God blessed Abram and Sarah, beginning the expansion of the people till they were as numerous as the stars in the sky, God continues to invest in his people. And we are called to do the same. The treasure we should be seeking is not a coin, but rather the friends who we can take our troubles to, to talk to, to seek advice, to be present for them and us for them when troubles arise. We are not to succumb to fear, but rather should face our fears with friends at our back and sides, aware of our own trials and tribulations. This is the kingdom we should be looking for, that which is given to us without any malice or any requirements. God gives us gifts of friendship, of co-workers and others, who make our days lighter by being there to be our sounding board or agents of relief. These are frequently unexpected when you suddenly hear the support you didn't know you needed there. Jesus has interacted for you by providing the support you needed at that particular point in time of being present with the other. So I want you to think upon our ending hymn today and how it ties in with our gospel lesson and this sermon. Our hymn is This Little Light of Mine. <laughs> it's not our fault. I wanted to get a little flashlight and put it on underneath my hat and just bring it up here and go, you know, bring my light out. But I'm getting the eye roll right now. <laughs> it's my fault. I didn't tell her about it, so sorry, dear. I'm in trouble again. <laughs> in our vacation Bible school, and left up front for three weeks, was a lighthouse. It wasn't a real lighthouse. It blocked access to the chancel for our light assisting minister, but it had a unique functioning light. But it conveyed our Christian message to all who saw it, who had learned something about Jesus during that week. Ultimately, we are called to be a light to the world, a light that shines onto the world, of helping to spread Jesus' message of love, compassion, and caring for the other and others. In order to do that, we have to move our light from under, uh, out from underneath the bucket or our hat and be present for all around us. Keep your eyes and your ears open for opportunities to be that light for others, a true disciple of Jesus in your daily lives. Amen. I invite you to stand and join me as we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. We pray especially for Anya, Camille, Chris, Daniel, Elizabeth, Erica, Giselle, Harold, Jane, Janet, Jean, Jenna, Jerry, Joan, John, Karen, Kenneth, Lainey, Marilyn, Melody and family, Mercedes, Patrick, Richard, Ronald, Ryan and family, Riley, Sarah, and those we name with our lips or in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give us the gift of discernment. Give us vision to see more clearly what you have in mind for Tree of Life and for each one of us in our daily callings. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for our bishops, Elizabeth and William, and our pastors, Greg and Jim. Bless them that they may continue to be a blessing to your church. We pray for Faith Evangelical Lutheran Church, St. Philip Lutheran Church, and its pastors, Patrick and John. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your love and kindness be upon your community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation and all who care for those in need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. In Thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promises of new life. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. you. Let us share that peace.
I invite you to rise as we say, say the offering prayer together, please. Let us pray together. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest as we feast on your goodness. Strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Go forward with the praise. Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and give joy to their unending hymn. Holy, holy. good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord with whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now join in the Lord's Prayer, which Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet.
invite you to rise for the prayer after communion. Let us pray together. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to the fruit of our lives for others. For friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have some announcements. I'll start them off. If, there, if they need to be clarified afterwards, somebody can come on up and hit me with a few more words. The houses for this forthcoming Saturday, if you haven't bought your tickets, you are to buy them directly from in the Everett Theater for the Centennial Celebration. Centennial Cabaret. Centennial Cabaret, which he said begins from the 1920s forward, right? The, the theater was built in 1922, so we're celebrating our 100th anniversary. And in doing so, we are presenting 100 years of Broadway in two and a half hours. So we'll, <laughs> it'll be a great show. It's going to be awesome. So it'll probably be about <laughs> two to three songs per decade. Per decade, yes, yes, exactly. For that one there. The Grocery Club has its sorting on this Tuesday coming up. I invite you to join us in fellowship afterwards. Um, Obviously, I didn't get it all right because Janet's coming up over there. <laughs> uh, our garden continues to produce, so uh, Marilyn picked some, somebody else picked some. They're on the table in there. If you want some, take them, because last week, unfortunately, I missed Greg, and a lot of, for some reason, seem to get frozen in the refrigerator. The refrigerator, sorry. You did a great job. Uh oh. You just forgot about, we do Dinner. eat. <laughs> I forgot about the dining afterwards. Have we found the location that you're heading for? I don't yes. know. How are we doing? Yeah, well, I'm sure Pat's We're going to go to Pat. We're going to do it tonight. Just let George know if you're going, well, not to the theater because he doesn't care, but if you're, <laughs> going, if you're going to eat so he can make a reservation. Okay? Sure. Okay. See you there. Thank you. So that was it. You didn't know. Make sure George knows so we can get a correct, a correct mm -hmm. peg count for the Pat's pizza. I guess it's pizza, right? Yes. It's everything. That's everything. Okay. That's select. Okay. Okay. Why don't we hear first? Go ahead, Nikki. You may have noticed in, in uh, this, uh, the, the, what is that? Burning the burning bush. <laughs> the uh, quilters meet this Wednesday, 10 o'clock. No, I didn't notice it in there because I, I might have got only it. We have turned that side. Was there version two or version three? Because I know she had a number of versions this week. <laughs> what she's trying to identify this Wednesday, 10 o'clock, Quilters Club is meeting here again. Yeah. And, uh, Please come. All you have to be able to do is tie a knot, and please come because I don't like to do it by myself. <laughs> she says her fingers get tired with tying knots, so that's all you need to do to be qualified to join the Quilters Club. And our council president, Pam. This spring we had, I guess it was spring, for Eat Food, we had an Eat Food fundraiser donated um, over $5,000 to the families in Ukraine. Can you hear me? Come back. You want me to read it for you? Because that will come through. Okay. So we obviously got a note from Lutheran World Relief on thanking us for the $5,000 donation for the Ukrainian World Relief. And it reads, Dear Pastor Johnson and members of Tree of Life, thank you for your generous gift to our neighbors in Ukraine this spring. Your love is being put to work in the form of medical supplies, shelter, food, and more for families in need. I'm so grateful for your partnership in this important work, and it's in gratitude to Emma Wagner, who somewhere is, may, be, may or may not be the boss of she's Lutheran she's World Relief. Yeah, she's definitely associated with Lutheran World, World Relief. So our funds went where they needed, needed to go at that point. So. And usually these are just put on the bulletin board, but this was special. I got a couple concerns a couple weeks ago after the summer camp that the sanctuary and other areas of the church were left in disarray. So on behalf of the council, I'd just like to remind everybody who has a fundraiser here that you need to also have a group that's dedicated to putting the church's property back in order. I want to personally thank Donna, Gail, and Sylvia, who is not here. In Jamaica. She's Jerry. in Jamaica. Yes. <laughs> Jerry, Sympathies. Buddy, and John. <laughs> for bringing, 
put, putting everything back together, but it's not fair to just take for granted that worship and music is going to do it or that the property committee is going to do it. It's incumbent on all of us to keep that church looking beautiful. One of the complaints was that we're looking for a new pastor, and so we need to be in our best behavior. We need to look the best that we can. We don't know if the candidate will come in without an appointment just to see what we're expecting or asking them to take over. So just please keep that in mind. We need the fundraising, but we need the cleanup just as much. And the exploratory committee, an email was sent out meets for the first time on August 17th. We're preparing a, a, pa a package to send to Pastor Litton, who was here. She has a candidate that she has in mind. She'd like to be considered for Tree of Life. That's not saying the exploratory committee would be in agreement with that candidate, but she needs a picture of this church. So we're putting together leaflets, burning bushes, ministry profile, uh, everything that we call updates to our history, everything that we think would make a beautiful picture of Tree of Life. And we want every candidate that's available to want to come here and we get the best of it. Thank you. Can I just add something? Um, just as a FYI for future, uh, one of the things that happens when we have um, functions in the sanctuary is that the chairs get all pushed around, and we're very thankful for everybody who puts them back, but I don't know if everybody knows, there's three different styles of chairs. <laughs> it's, so it's hard to get them all where they're supposed to be, but they're different heights, and you can you know, you look across, they're all up and down by a couple inches, you might be sitting looking up at somebody next to you or down with so anyway, there's a wire back over here. It's all been separated <laughs> out. Those go there. This side now has little white dots on the back legs so that you know that those go on the right-hand side. Plain ones go over there. Wide back ones go over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Long awaited and richly deserved. So. We're not segregating, we're just trying to seat them so that they yeah. all go where they should go the first yeah. time rather than having to redo it multiple times. Uh, if there are no other, no other announcements, then I invite you to rise with the blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. We'll go forward with the sending song. Then we'll have the post lewd where I ask you to please sit, listen reflectively to the music that uh, Dwayne is going to provide for us. But then we'll go forward with the congregational prayer and finally the mission statement. <laughs> Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. 
congregational prayer at the end of the service is, Dear Lord, send, send us a pastor who is faithful, one who will be devoted to our church. Make our new pastor one who will lead us, encourage us, and love us. May we in turn faithfully join in our ministry with energy and joy. Amen. Faithful children of God, called by grace through Christ, sharing his gift with Middletown, Odessa, Townsend, and the world. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.